how long is it gonna take to fix the broken nail, do an acrylic fill, and a complete color change. We're gonna find out exactly how long it should take you to complete this service right now on Real Time. All right, Tracy. Um, there's a lot going on because it took me like six takes to get that intro because I couldn't remember everything that's happening in yeah, this. Yeah, I know. I forgot what we were doing in between. <laughs> Walk us through what you're going to do here. So this is pretty typical. Your client comes in, they, you've done artwork or whatever it is. This, in this case, we have gel polish, we have chrome, we have glitter. Client broke her nail doing, it's not my fault, it's her fault by the way, uh, <laughs> doing whatever. Uh, so we have to repair. She let me know that ahead of time. If they didn't, it's one nail. I wouldn't really worry about it. So pretty typical. Gonna gel polish again, maybe do a little glitter or something on top of that. How long should this take you to do? 30 minutes. 30 minutes, that's the goal? That's the goal. Okay, and but this is what you would book in the salon, correct? It, it really is. I did typically about 14 clients a day right. um, to do that. I'm not working a 14 hour day. I'm gonna work like a seven to eight hour day. So uh, again, it's about maintenance, right? Because once we build our clientele, we're not, we're not getting that full set price. Um, I know a lot of people were like, but you're not giving your client attention. My clients were my full attention. I didn't talk to the other clients. They came in, they sat in the waiting area. Uh, I didn't take text messages and I didn't take phone calls. They're the most important thing to me when they're in my chair. That way, they're, people are in a hurry anymore anyway. They want to get out too. So you treat them special, you treat them nice, you give them good nails, and there's no problem getting them done in 30 minutes. I, I really, I think that's so important and I absolutely love that. Are you ready to go? Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, let's start, of course, by pushing back those cuticles. It's gonna give me room to work with. We're not gonna spend a lot of time doing this because really that electric file will help me take care of any cuticle issues. This is just getting that gap between the two surfaces and giving me room to work. Stuff doesn't really grow out extremely quickly. She has certain nails that do, certain ones that don't, which is pretty typical. Okay, switching to my safety course bit. We're gonna have to take this one down a little bit more because we have to build it back up. Put a new nail on there, fix her. Again, her fault, not mine. Take it pretty far down to that natural nail. Again, we're just working on the surface of the product. I'm not going down to her natural nail. I'm not doing any damage. I'm not hurting her. Focus back there. Clean through. Putting a little bit of pressure, but really, if you have good bits, the bits are gonna work for you. The minute you feel like you're putting a lot of pressure or the minute that your client keeps on telling you that it's getting warm or hot on them, that means you need a new bit. And bits typically only last, I replace my bits every month. So actually I replace them about once a week if I was doing a lot of acrylic. So again, they don't last a lifetime, unfortunately. They never look like they need to be replaced. But again, the minute you start shaking your hand out because it's hurting, the minute your client starts saying that it's burning, the minute you start feeling like you have to put a lot of pressure, that all means time for a new bit. So this is when you typically are just listening to your client going, uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. my salon. I don't think it's ever quite like that though. No, it's not. I don't it's, think you, you yeah. know what I'm saying? I think you actually would engage. Oh, of course. You know what, my salon, the girls in my salon were so interesting and such a kind of funny group. But typically my client was twisted around listening and talking to them rather than me, which was perfect. Then we had a lot of 
questions about phones, well, actually comments about phones, that your clients have their phones. I don't care. Honestly, if my client wants to be on their phone, as long as they're not disturbing the other people, and as long as they have their hand ready when I need it. If they want to be on their phone, more power to them. That lets me work faster. Sorry if I'm go out of frame, guys. No, your head. Oh, my head. Yeah. You're okay. <laughs> you're okay. You're okay. That's why I copy you. You're just getting close. That's okay. The older I get, the closer I have to be to the now. <laughs> I swear. This age thing sucks. Got glasses on. I'm all up in the nail. <laughs> Still can't see it. Are there any other questions people had during that last time that we can answer while we're doing this? Why do you work in the overhand grip? Ah, good question. So I didn't. When I first started, I always had an underhand grip. And what she's talking about is how I'm holding her fingers while I'm electric filing. Um, this really saves my wrists because I'm not bending. And I'm not have the um, what is it, Darth Vader death grip on you. <laughs> so this keeps me from doing that. And I actually have carpal tunnel in both wrists. It's not, I really, actually, let me restate. I don't have it now. I had it really bad. I wore wrist things and everything to bed. Um, Greg taught me how to use the electric file and to use the overhand grip. And it, it made a huge difference. It was kind of hard at first to get used to. But once you get used to it, it's going to save you. It's going to save your body. I think that just the electric file in general does that. And some people were asking, well, what if you don't have an electric file? I hand filed for six years prior to learning. And I can tell you that's why I had carpal tunnel. It's really rough on your wrists. You're going to go faster and save your body if you use a electric file. So basically what we're doing here is we're just removing all that gel polish, the chrome, the glitter, getting it ready so we can switch bits and do a quick prep. When I'm pushing back the cuticles or if she had gel polish on, I'm continually looking to see, is there anything broken? Is there anything that I have to fix? I don't sit, sorry, have you? He's bopping me in the head. No, he's mm -hmm. tapping you very gently. <laughs> <laughs> Whacked me in the back of the head, guys. <laughs> Suing. Uh, when I get out of line. <laughs> uh, I forgot where I was going with that. Uh, Mr. Kyle, I, I have no idea. See, you hit her so hard that she lost her I train lost, of thought. Totally. Oh, I'm <laughs> continually looking for lifting. I'm looking for broken nails. I don't stop when they first walk in and let them explain everything that happened to their nails because clients do that. Like, and you see here, this happened, and then my dog ate this one, mm -hmm. and then and it's like, I'll, you can explain while I'm, I'm getting bopped again. <laughs> Uh, you can explain, got a little more gel polish there, as I go. You can tell me all about it. I want to hear about it. I want to hear about your whole life, but it has to be as I'm working. I'm just tucking that bit right into that cuticle area. Again, if you have your prep work down when you do the full set and when they come in for fills, you can see there is no lifting. It happens. Lifting happens, I already did the thumb. Um, but it'll be very rare if you prep the correct way. So I'm gonna brush her off. You just kind of go through with a dry brush, get it all off, and then we're gonna go back in with our swipe. Pump that, and really make sure that's nice and clean. I'm using a clean brush. It's not a brush that I used on every single client. After I'm done with it, it'll go in the dirty bin and I'll wash them at the end of the day. Brushes are cheap. 
Please don't use a one that's disgusting on your clients. Okay. Protein. Sorry, hubby. We have a little glitter there, and off it goes. Get our protein bond on. Wipe my own hands off. I'm just hitting that exposed natural now. That's all we need to pay attention to. If you get it elsewhere, it's not a big deal. This is not acid primer, so it's not gonna yellow your product or discolor it in any way. But it's just a waste of product. And I'm all about saving money. So we're just really hitting that natural area. And we are good. I'm gonna go back twice. Remember, I like to do it twice on everybody. I know we say one time for most people, two time for heavy lifters. I don't want to find out she's a heavy lifter, so I'm just going to do it twice. Takes me an extra two seconds. And I know that she's going to come in with no lifting. Remember, if you do get lifting, you have to take care of it. Please don't glue it down. Don't pull out your nippers. We have some great videos on how to remove lifting. Um, the quickest possible way, but don't try to mask it. Just take care of it. Okay, form time. Grab our form. Get it on. We're good. Get our powder. Get our liquid. Get our table towel, and we are good to go. Gonna put it down, just kind of look at her other fingers, see what length we got, drag it out. I always say the first three nails of the day don't count because you're kind of really trying to figure out what the temperature is of the room. Once you got the first three done, you're good to go. You can you can bane them out. So we're gonna play with this one a little bit more than we will the rest till we get a feel for it. Make sure we're not crooked. Get another pearl. Put it down. Make sure we have enough product. Put one more pearl. Shorter nails, we can tend, we can usually do shorter nails in one pearl. These are pretty long, so it might take you two or three, and especially when it's the first nail, because you're trying to really gauge it. Moving on, let's grab a little product and do our fill. Doesn't take much. Remember, we're just filling that back area all the strength, the structure, everything we need is where it's supposed to be. We don't have to think about it. We don't remove a ton of product when we're doing the fill. It's not necessary because the nail isn't peached out. Is my head in the way, Hippie? You're good. I haven't got popped, so it's good. <laughs> Just as you said it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Not how it is. I'll just bring my hand up to you. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. The struggle is real. <laughs> it's like trying, especially reading the names on manicure or anything, any bottles anymore. I'm like, I have, no, I have no idea what it <clears throat> says. I used to make fun of my mom. You can't see that. <laughs> Forties all downhill. It's true. It's true. <laughs> Make sure we get back there. There we go. Okay. It's funny. I think someone commented like, "Seemed like she was stressed out or nervous." Like you know, when you're doing something like this on camera, it is a little stressful. <laughs> oh, it's 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 insane. Yeah, like, it's insane. you're literally um, being timed. 
you, you're being timed, you have to perform, you're performing. It's different than even just being in the, in the salon. It's completely different. Yeah. Because thousands of people are going to see it, right? It's They're just, judging me. <laughs> it's just a completely different environment. Weeps like I'm judging you, actually. 100%. 100%. <laughs> Okay, last nail, and we'll get to filing. Just nice wet pearl, pull it forward, and there we go. Get rid of our powder, close it so we don't get dust all in it. See where we are on this. I know that this is not quite dry because when you're doing a basic fill, you're going pretty, pretty quick. So a lot of times you're running into the problem that it's just not dry yet. You can kind of control that with how much liquid you use, but it takes about three minutes for it to dry. Steph's doing me a favor, she's putting in the light. And sometimes when you start using the electric file, I just go kind of light and that's causing friction and it's gonna heat it up which will help it dry a little bit. I think Habib should have to do it. Mm -hmm. Base coat? Hmm? D oh, just base coat? Base coat. <laughs> so it's still a little wet. Yeah. How fast? He's all two hours. <laughs> Technique first, then speed, right? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> We gotta shape this a little bit. I actually do a lot of my shaping when I have excess on the sides with the electric file. Again, I don't like pulling out the hand file, then going to the electric file, and then going back to the hand file. So I like to do everything in one whack. A little bit more. Okay, let's see how we are in this one. Nice. Really, we're using such a small amount, we're really just kind of blending. Sorry, Hibby. Blending the product into itself around that cuticle, making sure it's nice and flush. Love using the safety bit for this because we're not worried about cutting them. You can really tuck in there, get it nice and tight. season my file anything that I can do ahead of time when I'm here by myself I don't have a client I go through and I'll do stuff like season my files and get them ready let's see make sure we're getting it kind of close to your shape it's always hard with one repair and getting them all the same shape <laughs> Switch them fills. Yeah, and a longer now. And that puppy in. It's okay. Good. A little. Am I out of. Am I getting her out of the shot or am I putting my head in the shot? You're good. Right now. Okay. okay. You're like you're just failing. That's all you're doing. <laughs> Okay, remember the hand file is really just kind of our what we use to blend everything into itself. Make sure that back area is nice and flush. There we 
everything's nice and smooth. Our sidewalls are nice and shaped. seconds of made me feel better. What else we got? Was there any other questions? Um oh. what about when sorry? What about when your client is being indecisive as to what they want? Uh, that's a really good question, actually. So a lot of times we can, the client can eat up time, important, vital time. So I always wanted my clients to know what they wanted prior. Now they could sit down and go, oh, you know, I kind of want pinks, but I'm not sure what I want to do. And as long as they knew by the time I was ready to pull out the glitters and the gel polish, they were good. But there was no half an hour of deciding. You needed to know we have to go. Um, and they were more than welcome to come ahead of time and look at the book or, you know, nowadays everything's digital. Get on my Instagram, check it out before you come in. And then that way you're gonna be, sorry. I'll let Stephanie take those cues. <laughs> get, get us in a frame. Um, that way they really are. And I find that clients, once they get to know you, are kind of like, oh, you know, I just want pinks. Do what you want. Yeah. Which can, sometimes can be even more challenging. Mm -hmm. what about I liked clients to have an idea as to what they wanted. And usually if they didn't, we would be discussing it, like you said, during the filing and application so that by the time that we were done and ready to put on color there was some type of a decision made and if not then I got to decide <laughs> time's up ding 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 I think you really kind of build a clientele around your own style sometimes mm -hmm. at first you kind of take everybody but I think after a while you get known for whatever look you like, and mm -hmm. that's usually the clientele that you you have. Mm -hmm. And just remember, like, if you aren't a pink and white person and you don't want to do pink and whites, so don't be wearing it. Mm. Clients always want what uh, what um, you have on. So if you need a lot of money that week, make sure that you're wearing an expensive set. getting the cues stuff. Yeah. It's the only time where your client actually gets to push you around a little. Yeah. Remember, we don't want to sit here and smooth out the nail a ton, which can waste a lot of time, but it also will, um, it will also cause you problems when we go to gel polish. More than likely they'll be coming back because it chipped or something. Sorry. Okay, let's dust it off. Now, I don't know if I said this the last video, but I don't have the client go wash. I don't have them do anything but stay in this chair because they tend to get lost. They go in the bathroom, they use soap that has oil on it, they, they're playing with their hair, and anything that has oil or soap or anything like that on it is going to interfere with your gel polish. Okay. Let's pull our protein bond out. And we're just getting that on top. What this does is this is going to give us that just added insurance that we're not going to have any problems with the gel polish chipping. I don't get carried away with putting it on there. I'm just really quickly slopping it on. I guess you shouldn't say slopping it on mm -hmm. when you're doing nails. 
just tagging it. I don't have to seal the edges or anything like that. Okay. We're gonna pull out our beige 102 and our flash and burn, which is just a really, really pretty color, and our spoon. Let's go for it. We're gonna put, sorry, he'll be even my head in the way. Just a hair. Sorry. Literally. Literally. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. <laughs> so we're just gonna, as we go, and just sprinkle it on. So before we started, I was like, do you have everything? Because preparation is 99% of this. Like if you're not prepared, then you're gonna cost yourself trouble and you're, you're gonna cost yourself time. And I'm like, oh yeah, I have everything. I didn't have the swipe, mm -hmm. swipe it out. So again, the beginning of the day, go in early and get yourself set up. And working on a clean station, that makes a huge difference in itself. Okay, we'll just keep on going. And what I like, the reason I'm doing this at the same time, instead of just doing all the gel polish at once, is that glitter kind of keeps the gel polish from moving. That way I can do all five fingers. Typically I would do five fingers anyway, but I'm getting really close to the cuticle area because I want to make sure it's nice and tight. We're not doing two coats. Um, and that glitter is just going to hold it in place for me. And I don't have to worry about running. My clients used to flip out at this part. <gasps> You're wasting! Glitter, <laughs> precious glitter. Go ahead and stick it in the light. There's a light. I have a light on both sides of me. Um, I've always worked with two lights. It's a, just another speed technique. That way you don't have to cross over. The body's not awkward. Um, it's just, it's not, I always call it a need want. So if you're first getting out, you can work with one light. It's not a problem. It's not a desperate need to have two lights. But once you start and you're making a little bit of money, get yourself a second light. It's really gonna make a huge difference. Cause it'll save you time and make you more money. Yep, exactly. Well, that's the funny part, right? Is some people are so interested in, take for instance, the bits. They're like, oh, I can't do that because I can't buy a bit once a week cause it's a lot of money. But if you're going slower and not having a good bit will cause you to go slower then you're wasting money. You gotta have the right tools. You gotta have the right product. And it has to be in good condition. I don't wanna go to a surgeon that hasn't bought new, uh, <laughs> new tools. Are you sure? Um, nice gonna... dull surgical <laughs> blades. <laughs> it's, it's gonna be a hard pass. <laughs> no, no back alley. <laughs> Cheaper though. <laughs> Need your gallbladder out? They got botched. <laughs> Love that show. Okay. So we cured this out for a minute. You can cure it for 30 seconds, but I like my client's hand to be in the light the whole time. Thought I hit. Um, that way they're not messing my work up. I'm gonna put this to the side. We're gonna pull this over. We'll get rid of it all together. I know that messes up the camera. We're gonna dust her off. And we're gonna grab our stain resistant top coat. And get that first layer on. Or second, first layer, the only layer. I only need to do this once. When she washes, all the excess glitter comes off the skin. I won't even charge her for it. <laughs> well, I'm charging her for the glitter, not the excess glitter. <laughs> Definitely charging her for the glitter. This is something one of our mentors does, uh, Nat. Actually, she's a distributor. 
She started putting flash and burn over the nudes. Oh my God, it's so pretty. I love it. In the light, one minute. Dust off. And if you have really good clients, they actually do the buttons for you. <laughs> Sorry, heavy. always work with two different stain resistance. If I'm doing nudes, pink and whites, I have one top coat for that. Glitter has its own top coat because I'm not going to sit there and try to waste my time picking out glitter out of my pink and whites or my nudes. In the light, one minute. Get our swipe. That sticky layer off. While well, she's still curing for that one minute, just go around, make sure it's nice and sharp. Basically, I'm just keeping myself busy. Go ahead and keep it in. Oh, did it go off? It went off. We're good. And we are done. Um, <laughs> seriously, that was ridiculous. It was fun. There was a lot going like a on there. Dust everywhere. Everywhere, <laughs> yes, but that's reality too, right? It's reality. Um, that was crazy because you fixed a broken nail, you filled, you removed all the color, and then you reapplied and put a brand new set of beautiful nudes with a flash and burn, gorgeous set of nails. How are you feeling? I feel good. I feel really good. This is fun. Like I, I haven't had the opportunity to do this kind of thing yet. In a long and, time. In a long time. Yeah. And uh, it kind of makes me want to go back into salon. Really? Not really. That's a no. <laughs> no, it's it's fun. It's yeah. like it's like getting the talking and the going, and it's like every. And this is the beautiful thing. Every time when you guys start doing this thing, don't expect it to be thirty minutes right yeah. away. Technique first, and then the time will just come. That is incredible. Um, the whole point of this, I just want to remind you, is to show you the potential, you know, um, of what you can do in the salon and all these services. We're gonna be breaking down by time and how long it should take you and what you should strive for. We hope you enjoyed it. Tracy, great set of nails, beautiful. We'll see you next time on Real Time. <laughs>